more that the actions and uh, all the references to it are gone forever. So you are free to experiment, but pay attention because if it happens to you too, and it wasn't what you expected, it might cause some errors in your projects. And I uh, wanted to finish on the global variable. Uh, we only have two types of variable, number or text. And often in the forums it has been asked to have another type of variable which is called boolean. You have it as an instance variable. You've already seen it in the previous uh, sessions too. The instance variables are variables that are only applied to an object type. So right there. You also have number text but you also have boolean and boolean is actually the values can only be true or false and it's pretty useful at times to check for states or stuff like that. You can still emulate boolean variables with global variables. The globals are strictly name or text uh, and yet you can uh, you can um, deal with it. So I will be adding yet another global variable. I will name it uh, state of example. I'm not sure it means anything special, but here it is. State of example. Yeah, doesn't mean a thing actually, but anyway, bear with me on this one. I'll be reusing my buttons. Um, what can I do there? I will make a new global variable and my state is the either started I will name it like that started and this time I will be checking on the constant checkbox. A constant variable is actually it kind of defeats the purpose of of variables because it means that the value there, the zero, will never change for the whole time of execution. It means that you are actually only defining the value during edit time in the editor, but once you are will have started your game, you won't be able to change this value. You will be able to access it though, and also you'll be able to use the name of the variable for reference. So for example, I could add an event compare variable and check that state of example is equal to started. So it means that state of example is equal to zero because started is equal to zero. And if I make a new constant variable I will name it I don't know I have I don't have good examples ID right now let's call it second constant make it a constant and call it one and I will make it so that if I click the button two this time I will add one to state of example here it is and I will write there. Mm, maybe not a good example actually. Um, yes, I go with that anyway. So open text. I'll just go like that and I will try so when I will start my um, when I will run my project right now I expect so still layout one and then I will have started 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 etc repeating over and once I will have clicked the plus button it should stop because once I've clicked the plus button I will have 
a different value for state of example and so state of example won't be equal to started anymore it will be equal to second constant so actually I could ma even make this so change it so that it's second constant and modify that second constant it's really a bad example in the sense that it's not really something useful but I hope it shows you the mechanic and no problem Coxie well it's kind of an uh, yeah I'm not showing the the chat on live it's a kind of um, non not announced uh, session so don't it's not really it wasn't really planned and uh, yet I just felt like uh, I could uh, explain a bit more on variables but the third session will happen tomorrow as planned so no problem so yeah let's test it right there started and second constant okay so as you have seen as long as the uh, state of example was equal to zero so started it was writing started and once I changed the value it went and only displayed second constant so yeah this example is not really interesting there are there are better use of such tools I'm just showing for now um, and so yeah as I was saying first it's a it's a kind of trick to make it a boolean because this way you are testing if the value the variable is equal to a certain value or to another one so yeah I will now get to the instance variables um, so yeah Jan yesterday did a uh, uh, session uh, a bit like uh, this one an extra video uh, about picking and so that's one of the one of the major uses of instance variables actually I will just save this example right there and make a new project What did I do? Oh, I just closed. Nice. Here it go. So new project. Yes. Yes, I, for the Boolean example, I could use true or false, but I'm wondering actually if it's not keywords that are already reserved. No, apparently not. So yeah, we can use either true or false for boolean I will finish on that they are constant and I can uh, go with a uh, have I clicked or have I not clicked kind of s kind of thing so like I will rename either false is zero oh, of course I can't false one because you can't have two variables with the same name so for now just using a temporary name so here it is false zero one so when uh, and a last variable So yeah, a variable. Um, oh, funny name. Is it true? It's a number. Here it is. So I will check the value of is it true. If it's equal to false, I will set the text to no. It's false. And when is it true is equal to true? I 
I will just go with yes. And yet again. So this time it won't just show a different time, it will only change once. And yet another button. And when I click the button, I will change system set value. Is it true to true? So if I'm starting, interesting. So no, not the good one. Okay, so starting. Is it true? No, it's false. And I click yes. Now it's true. Okay, so saving it again. This is global boolean. Of course, like like um, often with our session, we will be providing the KPX. And so we'll go and make yet a new project and now use a bit of instance variables. So I will do like Jan actually and wait a bit and ask, uh, are you okay? Are you following guys? And prepare my next example. No enter, I guess it's okay, I will keep on. I'm just preparing two. Okay, I've made two objects. One is already an instance variable, which I named child, and yet another one I will call parents. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with, the, with that, but generally with the name you can rest assured that this will be a way to check and to keep in memory the UID of an instance so that you will know what uh, instance is a child of this object and uh, what other objects can be the parent. It's a bit confusing uh, right now, I guess. Uh, kind of improvising right there. Um, I'll just go with... Yeah, I will be creating on start of layout I will make a loop so in sub-event loop for loop 1 to 10 it's ok and I will be creating sprite objects create object sprite on the layer 0 and I will random it, randomize its position in layout width and random layer height so it will create a bunch of objects and what I can do I will add a mouse input and when I will be clicking the sprite object I will be yeah I will be system creating object a sprite 2 I will create it sprite.x plus 32 and sprite.y plus 32 I will also keep inside of the object itself in the instance variable child I will keep the sprite2.uid This will also allow me to make another condition to make sure that child is equal to zero so whenever a sprite won't have uh, its instance value, its instance variable child's value to zero, I won't be able to create a new sprite. Let's see it in action. 